Hi, this is Mike Amiri. You're watching interviews for The Drop at Barney's on High Snobiety. Hey, it's Jeff Carval from High Snobiety. And I'm Jackie Kim of Barney's New York. And we're here with Mike Amiri at The Drop at Barney's Madison Avenue, New York City. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for having me. So Mike, tell us a little bit about the collection that's coming out today. Um, we want to do something really special and, and novel for The Drop. So a lot of the pieces that, that we had in our, uh, our collection, we kind of took them back and reworked them in different colorways and different fabrications and do what we uh, do really well in Los Angeles, which is like this really detailed, irreverent handwork. Is there a favorite piece? Um, right now, I mean, I love, I love all of them. How do you pick one of your children, right? But um, I think the, the bandana boot uh, is, is currently one of my favorites just because it was, uh, it was like a novel concept when I first drew it up and how to construct it. And then um, when we did the Barney's colorway, which is red and brown, it came out so well and I really, I was really happy with it. Yeah, I love that boot. And you come out of the LA scene, but we're in New York, of course. And, you know, what are the differences you see between the two cities? It's funny, like, LA, we dress, um, one, it's like a, a part of culture because, you know, it's, it's like a, it's a big, like, uh, surf and skate city. And two, it's, it's like the weather kind of dictates a lot of how we dress. So you could be in a t-shirt from uh, morning till night and all you need is that, a pair of jeans and like a leather jacket and you're, and you're kind of good throughout the whole day. In New York, it's a, it's a bit more of like a functional, uh, functional uh, fashion is you know it's freezing down here and there's also like a different kind of independent nature I feel like in New York there's like so many different kinds of styles um, all in the same kind of in the same place let's talk about uh, streetwear which is a term that's been here for a long time right. it's certainly New York LA London Paris Tokyo have all right. been real central hubs to it um, how has that stuff evolved for you and how does the work that you do today fit in or does not fit in with that term right I, th I think it's funny. It's, it's street streetwear is such a broad, it's such a broad term. Like for me, it really means uh, something independently and um, organically created, not through um, uh, big corporation or big investment. You know, whether it's kids uh, screen printing T-shirts because that's all the means they have, or um, uh, a kid like me who was, uh, you know, sanding a pair of jeans in a, in a basement. You know, it's all about that independent nature. I think what's amazing now is watching um, watching the rest of the world kind of recognize the importance of streetwear and street culture and also independent designers and how relevant they are to actual big business. So it's really given confidence to a new breed of uh, designers and creatives to really uh, have the motivation to show their talents. You know, your, uh, our readers, of course, are very familiar with the work that uh, you've produced. Um, and folks that are coming through Barney's today, of course, are getting turned on to a bunch of exclusives. You know, for a, a customer that's new to your work, you know, how do you bring them in? How do you describe what you do? Um, I guess a lot of it is, can be considered like uh, classics, like rock and roll classics, but elevated um, through different fabrications and execution and a bit of like, a reverence so it's not so perfect and everything we do is not always so shiny and polished there's a bit of character and a, and a bit of spirit in everything we make um my friends are huge fans of your jeans what is it about them that they're so obsessed with well i always i always uh like to feel it's not like just one thing you know like of course we focus on like fit and and fabrication and, and how much time we spend on everything and how we execute it and then it's also just kind of controlling the um the image of of, of the brand and protecting how much distribution you do because i like i like people to search for product i don't mm -hmm. like it to be everywhere so when someone finds their size they buy like two or three pairs because right. it's going to be it's going to be hard to find i've always wanted something that was really special like that connecting back to you know what's happening in la and certainly the fairfax scene with barney's talk to us about the relationship that you have with this great shop yeah i mean for me, Barney's was like, a, as, as a young designer, you, you walk the floors of Barney's and it's really intimidating and you kind of look on the floor and you see all these like um, legendary designers and uh, you always kind of dream about having your name kind of on that wood or on that marble. And um, for me, it was just, it was, it was, a, it was like a, not a finish line, but like a, a beginning of the next chapter when I first got to see my last name on that floor. And um, it's really uh, been one of the 
uh, top moments in my career. Congrats on that. Thank you. So what's next for you? What's next for the Miri brand and whatever else that you have going on? Well, as the brand is getting bigger and the collections are getting larger, there's a bigger responsibility to be really cohesive with your message and to um, get better with every season. And I think the next steps for Miri is just kind of um, evolving the story, but staying true to uh, what we are. Do you have any plans to have your own retail stores, to keep growing internationally? Like, Yeah, I mean, right now we're, we're growing really, really fast and we're trying to slow that growth a little bit. Um, I think it's more focusing on communication a bit too, because in the beginning you're just kind of selling clothes and as the company grows, you want to sell more than that. You want to sell an energy and you want to sell a spirit, you want to sell a vibe and you want to sell a certain cool. So things like activations like this and also like retail stores and experiences help people understand the whole brand and kind of be immersed into that vibe rather than just the pair of jeans. And at the drop, of course, we have uh, an incredible number of designers and brands here. Curious to know which ones you're interested to see as you walk the floor. Um, I'm a big uh, Greg Lauren fan. Yeah, he's an uh, amazing guy. I followed him from the beginning and everything he does has, has, so, much, uh, has so much heart in it. And uh, yeah, and of course, uh, I'm a big Virgil fan too. I feel like he can't lose and he's just such a great humble guy. So always happy to see what he does. Mike, thanks so much for coming through. Thank you.